So with that, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Are there any amendments to the agenda, Sarah? No amendments to the agenda. Okay. So reviewing and approving the 2021 Local Emergency Operations Plan. Very exciting. Um, I did look over, everything all looked okay to me, except my name appeared a few too many times, but that's all right. Yep. Does anybody have any, any questions or comments about that? No. Okay. Well, is somebody willing to make the motion that we approve it? I'll make a motion that we approve the, the uh, 2021 Local Emergency Operation Plan. I'll second. Okay. Steve moves and Phil seconds. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We've approved it. Wow. Consider, considering sending a notice of violation to the town junk ordinance for 570 Vermont Route 12 action possible. There are actually two places there on Route 12 that are really bad, right? Uh, well, I'm just, the, what the complaints I've been receiving are at 570 Route 12 that have to do with Bob Bauer's place. You, you, the board has sent him notices before and because the land is owned underneath where he lives is owned by Downstreet, uh, we also send them the letter and there usually is some action. So this is the one we've sent notice to before. Right, we sent notice to it before um, because for the exact same reason, the kind of the junk piles up. And this, in this case, the complaints I got were about people saying that they're going down Route 12 and actually some vehicles are in the Route 12, they're, they're easing out right into the road. Oh my God. Yeah, Especially now that you have like bicyclists and you know a lot of different traffic going up and down the road, it's getting to be dangerous and it's more than just you know a health violation, it's yeah. dangerous or whatever. Well, okay. yeah. I mean, here we go. You know, we've got that junk ordinance. We never enforce it. You know, if we get if we get action with our letter, that's the good news. If we don't get action, then we've got to figure out what we're going to do. But what about what about that other place? Does anybody know anything about that? I mean, there are two that are just horrendous. One's right down the road from the other one. Uh, I'm not sure which one you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I'm not well, either. they look sort of the same. I mean, there are these driveways that go up the hill with piles of stuff on both sides and junk all over the place. Well, anyway, let's 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 start with what we've got. We have we received complaint letters. I've received phone calls and an email. Yes, and the people ask not to be identified. It's public record, of course, but I don't see any reason to identify them right now. Right. No. Yeah. I mean, I've been by there. I've I've seen it, and it's. It's a mess. I mean, the, the question for me is, uh, is there a health violation anywhere there? It'd be nice if we could hand this off to the state of Vermont. <laughs> um, I, I, the good news is that considering that Downstreet owns the property underneath there, there was a lot of instant action the last time, several years ago, when you sent this notice okay. violation. So, I mean, he, okay. there's, a, it, there's definitely another uh, factor at work. Okay. So all we have to do is send the notice of violation, or at least that's the first step. I'm just going to send almost the exact same letter we sent last time, saying that the board met, considered, you know, has received complaints about the violation of the junk ordinance. I sent them a copy of the junk ordinance and say why it is a violation of the junk ordinance, and you guys give them a, a certain time period to clean it up. I think uh, if you guys want to give him a time period, I think that would be a good idea. He's got a lot of heavy equipment there. It's not going to be, e including like a, like an old rusted backhoe that I think he got just to remove the junk and instead has become part of the junk. <laughs> yeah. still, uh, oh, he's, he's got vehicles. He's got a backhoe. He's got all kinds of crazy stuff. I mean, it's not, it's not like just picking up trash. It's, there's a lot. To, uh, you'd have to call Jamie Bolduck and see if he would be willing to come down. It's just, it's, it's a big deal. Sarah did Sarah, Steve here. Did we give him a time frame on the last letter? Oh, let me check. I think you gave him something like two weeks to make some progress or something. Um, but you try to remember what year that was. Uh, well, I'd, I'd recommend we give him 30 or 45 or 60 days not yeah. to make progress, but to clean it up. It says... Uh, 
Yeah, the when you look at, I'm just going through the ordinance, and it seems that it says upon receiving written notice from the select board, the owner uh, shall remove or screen from view within 30 days. So you can just we can just cite the ordinance right there. Yeah, yeah. There and give them 30 days. Okay, I'll move that we uh, send the ordinance as written. And yeah. then is there a second? I'll I'll second. second. Okay, that was Liz. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Moved and seconded. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Can I just wait. Hold on. I just have a quick question. I mean, is if this is a safety concern, like car accidents and stuff like that, is thirty days too long for this? Like, is there some sort of emergency? Or is it not that? Is it more of an eyesore? Yeah, have you have you driven by it, Liz? Have you have you seen it? Have you have you gone down? I that mean, I drive. Stuff? Yeah, I I've dri I've driven by it, but it, I don't. I'm not sure that I've like necessarily said, "Oh my God, that has to get." That's in the middle of Route 12. It's got to get not, out of the it's way. It's not in the middle of Route 12. It's just right. No, it's not in the middle of Route 12, but it's certainly in the state right of way. It's in oh the yeah. Yeah, it's in the inside of a curve, so it blocks the sight line as well so, so my question is i mean you know is 30 days are we risking something with taking that long because he probably will take that long and he may not do anything in 30 days well may i say something yes yeah, go so, ahead, sir. uh yesterday uh I, I emailed bob to let him know that he was on the agenda and why and uh when I came home last night, I saw that he was trying to move some of the vehicles. <laughs> so, um, so I have high hopes for this. And okay. you know, it is Z Trans's problem. It's really not the town when it comes to the road right. situation. Yeah, it's not a okay. town road. All right, that's fine. I just wanted to be clear in case something tragic happened, and then it turned out we, you know, weren't firm enough uh, or something. It's been it's been bad for a long time, but it's gotten a lot worse. I would say. So, considering we're losing a cheater. Request. Is that any better? Uh, yeah. Yeah, but if you're driving, you're probably okay. going to go in and out. Okay. Well, the problem is, I have to to be good. I have to put my phone up under the windshield, but then I can't. Anyway, it's okay. <laughs> So, it's a challenging situation. Let's put it that way. Okay. I've, I've asked my driver to increase the pace 20 miles an hour so we can get better cell service. Um, so this down street request is just a letter of support for a grant application, correct? Peter, it's not down street. It's the Central Vermont Solid Waste I'm, Management. I'm sorry. I got my I, yeah, Central you're... Vermont Solid Waste. Yes, I'm yep. sorry. Um. So, so here's my thing about this. They've been trying to figure this out for a long time. They've got whatever it is, half or two thirds of the money that they need. And I think, I think it's a good project. Those, those solid waste collection days are a nightmare. I've been to a few of those and yeah, they're just they are. long lines yeah. and you have to wait forever and it's a real pain. Yeah. And the stuff that the ARC won't take, there's nobody else that'll take it. So. I, I think we should support them. I don't I don't see how Me it can hurt. I don't know how everybody else feels. I agree. agree. Okay. So uh, Sarah, if you would do a little edit job on that letter and prepare it, I will stop by and sign it. Okay. Do we need a motion or no? I don't think so. Okay. You have it on the agenda. So we should? Is that what you're saying? I don't know. We got oh, it. Let's have a motion. Okay, let's have All a right. motion. I move I'd that like we uh, support, uh, write a letter of support for the um, Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District for the uh, building that they're going to build. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Perfect. <laughs> I mean, they've really been working hard to try and figure this out. So, yeah, that's good. All right. Now, here's what everybody has really been looking forward to. Yes, we have. A review of the town personnel policy for possible update. Part of Select Board's 2021 goals. Action unlikely. 
So we did this to ourselves. Now we got to take our medicine. <laughs> so we have we have two versions of the personnel policy. So the one we should be looking at is the one that Sarah just recently sent us, which for some reason my internet is going in and out on my iPad, so I can't bring it up. So I've got to rely on you guys to help work our way uh, work our way through it. I have I have the old one, but not the uh, I guess not the correct one. Yeah, the difference is, Peter, that I accidentally tacked on the wrong signature page to the one that you guys revised in January of 2020. And in so doing, cut out, I just cut out a bunch of stuff. But the important thing that you guys did in, in January of 2020 is you updated Section 24, which is a uh, parental and family leave. Those employed full-time by the town on January 1st will on that day receive three days of paid per personal and leave per year. I don't know why that's on parental or pan pa family leave. It probably should just not be under that. So, No, it's under personal leave, Sarah. It's again, uh, okay. these things are numbered differently between the two versions. Okay. okay. So, so this, and the, I'm sorry, uh, Dorinda, that should have replaced the personal leave under section 23, is that right? That's correct. Okay, so that's just cross out section 23, which you have now, and then below that, you'll see those employed full-time by the town will on that day receive three days of paid personal leave per year. Um, and then the other thing, Dorinda, is you wanted to, uh, and the, the version that you have, Peter, doesn't necessarily outline the years of service and how on page eight, which is like, you know, the, your first through your fourth year, you get 10 to 80 hours, et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't list a uh, per biweekly paycheck as the version should. Let's put it that way. But that has already been approved. It's just yeah, the wrong. It's not in the version. When we made the updates, it, it just got tacked on to the wrong version. Okay. Right. Okay. So those were already approved. Yep. So what else, what else have we got that we need to uh, correct in this review? Are there particular things you're concerned about, Dorinda and Sarah? I think Dorinda had some concerns. I have a few questions. Um, I have a few questions and um, on a couple of different categories. The first okay. one under hours of service and pay period. Um, are we... Which, it, which, it uh, which, uh, where is it in the... Uh, I think it's under section five in the version you have. Okay, hold on, let me get there. Okay. Okay, so we start uh, out- Section right? five is the one I, the one I have, section five is conduct of employees. Okay, um, well then go to the next- Go to hours the of section. Hours yeah. of service pay periods, that's section six on mine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we'll get these numbers straightened out, but that's the section. Um, okay. You start out talking about regular work hours. Should we be putting what these hours are as far as like, I guess we have like summer hours for the highway crew. Um, Sarah does have her hours posted on the door for the town hall. Should there be hours listed as to um, in that section of what our basic hours are? I know there's exceptions to the rules all the time, but because you're asking all employees are expected to be in attendance during regular work hours, but yet we're not saying what those are. Post office here, Steve. So should it be? I don't know that we need that. I'm sorry, I'm in there. Meeting right now. I, I go. think it's liable to cause more trouble and it's going to be Comcast.net, okay? But okay, so. Um, just because, uh, what we're really talking about is the road crew, and they have all kinds of reasons for irregular hours. Okay. Right. So you I don't want to put that. So. Can I ask the question? Is the summer we, hours we is that something that's going to be voted on every year? No. No, I don't think it's a. So do we I say? Think, I mean, what we could say. 
I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dorinda. Well, I don't, I'm just trying to get something so we understand when people are supposed to be working because further down in the section, when you talk about outside employment, you're saying that employees may not engage in outside activities during their normal working hours. So are, are it we- say, It should say they may not, they may not participate in outside activities during their working hours, not just their normal working hours. Well, Any, anytime they're working for the town, they shouldn't be working for somebody else, right? But let, let's take it one step at a time. I don't think it's a bad idea to say what the regular regular hours are and then what the summer hours are. Right, and I'm not saying we have to say it's from six to five or something, but I think you should at least put in there that the expectation is from May 1st to whatever date you guys de decided on, it's a four day work week or something like that. So there is something in there. So I, I just think it's something that, you know, I don't yeah, know, I'm just throwing it out let's, there. Let's do this. Let's, let's establish, forget about the summer hours. Let's establish what the regular hours are the rest of the time. And, and what are those hours? 6.30? So Peter. Yes. Can I say something to that? Yes. I think, yeah, I don't think you want to set, you know, that the hours are 6 to 4.30 or, or 6 to 2.30. I just think you want to say that they will be, you know, expected to be to work and, and notify no more than half an hour or whatever it is after the starting time. But it'll be, your, their hours will be the, those hours set by the select board. So, so when you guys change the hours to summer hours, that'll take care of it. I mean, it's, it's, all, it's all in the minutes, it's all recorded what the hours are. Um, so that, 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 that gives you flexibility and takes care of all situations. I mean- Well, see, that's, that's, that's kind of why I just as soon leave, leave it out to tell you the truth. But I mean, say something like hours, regular hours shall be determined uh by the select board by the select board there you go that's okay. what i was trying to say so it already says that so okay then that's fine i just didn't know if you wanted to put your new decision in here or not well then i then i think what we have to be careful careful to do and and you know victor's going to help us with this but when the when the regular hours change from time to time whatever the reason is we need to make sure we get it in the minute absolutely yeah. Oh, and, and it's it's so flexible. I mean, there wasn't any definite set by the select board uh, as far as hours because you know they said we could go to I believe November first. Right. And you know if we start getting pounded with snow on October first, we can change it. Yeah. Right. So that right. flexibility is great. Hey, may I make a suggestion or not? Even though. Yeah. Um, considering that part of the problem is considering that people get this personnel policy when they're hired by the town and, you know, rumors fly fast and furious, it might go, might be helpful if you put something like, uh, the highway department, the road foreman in, co in consultation with the road commissioner and the road set, uh, and the select board may set summer hours, uh, uh, depending on the season, just put a line in there so that, no one comes away saying we're guaranteed from this date to that date. It still kind of just solidifies what you guys did at the last meeting. Does that work for you? No. Well, the, 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 here's the problem I have is the summer hours is a different, is, is a separate issue, but the, but the, the hours, you know, we, A rainy day do the guys sometimes go home their time on a different day reasons where they work different hours so the minute you write down what the hours are you're, you're then saying there may from time to time be exceptions to this but they're going to be exceptions all the time so i just I, I maybe what we should say is that the regular work week shall be 40 hours or whatever it is i believe it's 40 hours um times and schedules to be determined
by the select board in consultation with the road foreman and the uh, road commissioner. Does that make sense? You basically have that in there already. You yeah. said that, you know, there are- No, I know, I know, I so, agree. So that's fine. I mean, if you don't want it, we can leave it like that. Okay. It's just a clarification so we know, you know, what's going on. Um, well, I think I think the, the key watchword here is, as we discussed the last time, is to the extent we can, be sure we let the community know. Like definitely when we go to summer hours, we should let the community know. You yeah. know, put it on front porch forum, whatever. Um, you know, when we send the road crew home early because we're expecting a big snowstorm, uh, you know, I don't think we let them know that the road crew's going home at two o'clock in the afternoon because they expect to come in at four o'clock the next morning. I mean, that's crazy, right? Right. right. <clears throat> Okay, next item. The next question I have is under insurance and retirement benefits. Yep. What's um, the second number? Well, it could be 16 or 17. Okay, hold on, I'm almost there. Yeah. Eligibility for benefits? Uh, it's called insurance and retirement benefits. The town offers the right. following group insurance programs, da 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 da. Yep. Yep. Okay, nowhere under this do we mention that we contribute to the HSAs. Should that be in there? Yes. Yes, I would say it should. Okay. Because we talk about we talk about the way the way the paying for the health insurance works, but we don't say anything about the HSA. Right. Yeah. Right. So, I would say under health insurance, we right. should we. It, whoop. Go ahead. Well, yeah. Just I I, I don't know who, who it was. Yeah. Just as a subset of the health insurance piece. Right, that's that's all I'm saying. Yeah, is that add a sentence saying, you know, an HSA contribution of so much will be made, you know. Right. Um, how do how do we do that now, Dorinda? Do we do it twice a year, or do we do it once a year? Twice like a now? year. Twice right. a year. Yep. Okay, so you do want that in there? Okay. Yeah, I think that'd be good. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, under the same section, under long dis term disability and life insurance, yep. we've been we've been at um, the six dollars and thirty seven cent per month for the long term disability for the employees per portion for years. Um, should that be like health insurance and in that we do it as a percentage? I mean, our rates continue to go up every year or how do, should we address this? Should we just what leave is, that in I there? Think, I think our intent was that we would pay that. Well, the, the employee pays $6.37 a month according to the personnel policy. And right. that's what comes yeah. out of their check every month. So what's the, the, actual, what's the, actual, what's the actual cost? Um, currently, it varies according to the person's age and their yeah. wages. Right. Um, yep. You're paying anywhere from 25 to 35 36 dollars a month, I think. Yeah, I think we should increase that, but we gotta, you know, I don't think we can just increase it in the middle of the year. I think we should do that when we're Right, but the, uh, my question is, should this be in the personnel policy that it's listed as $6.37? No, it should, or... be a, it should be a percentage. Okay. And it should be a percentage, it should be a percentage of the cost for that employee. And I mean, an older person's going to cost more, they should contribute more. But that's my recommendation. The $6.37 is ridiculous. That obviously was probably a percentage at one time, but it's now it's. Right. Um, so, 
I just think that you're locking yourself into that. So if we change the personnel policy and then we change it, you'll have to make a change again down the road. So should we just eliminate it and put something that the employee will pay a percentage or something and then Sure, why don't we say the employee, the, the employee will pay a percentage um, of, the, of the actual cost and that percentage will be determined uh, by the select board. And we okay. can do it at, we just remember to do it. We can do it at review time. I mean, that's for the, we've got some older guys. They're gonna, they're gonna squawk when it goes from six dollars and 37 cents to 20 bucks that's what we're going to do well but i, I think, think for the for the for the purpose of the personnel policy I, I think we should just say you know the amended personnel policy is the contribution is going to be a percentage of the actual cost and that percentage will be determined by the select board right i think you need it generic like that yep. yeah that's good okay all right, you got that, Sarah. Right? I didn't write it down. Yeah, the 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 uh, the, the employee will pay a percentage, and that per percentage will be determined by the select board. That's the best I could get of what is that? What you meant, Peter? Yes. Okay. Should I say annually at budget time? That makes sense. Yeah. 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 When do the when do do we know when the rates change? No, probably not. Uh, yeah, I think I get the it. Usually with the calendar year, we get the new rates. Yeah. You guys, uh, well, I would say, uh, I would say the uh, the rates will be amended Ooh. when we receive the rate adjustment from the insurance company. Or just annually. Just do it annually. Yeah. Or yeah, just say annually. annually. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's fine. Okay. All right. Um, Dorinda, before you go from there, do you want to address the issue of dependence? Like we had an issue before. Do you want to define dependence? And also, do you guys want to get rid of civil unions partner, civil union partners, since they don't really exist anymore? They don't exist anymore. There's no such um, thing as civil. I mean, there. I guess there's some holdovers left over. I'm not sure yeah. of anybody, but I, I mean, leave, it's not I that big. There. Okay. The, but we what had, about the we had you someone to... who, was, who was involved in a civil union? They'd expect that person to be an eligible dependent. So why? I I hear you. Do you but do you uh, do you want to define dependent by age? Considering that health insurance can now, at least for the time being, you could a kid a, a kid could be on a parent's health insurance until they're 26 years old. And I know that in the Sam's case, they Dorinda gave him Sam the boot, cruelly gave him the boot. Uh oh. <laughs> when he reached a certain age so do you uh you know i don't know how you define dependence yeah i guess you know there would still be college kids you could keep on your insurance policy and your you know write them off in your taxes but is that good enough for you or do you want to put an shouldn't age we, or? shouldn't we allow allow eligible to per, dependents per federal regulations or whatever the right word is Right, because they do have to live within the household and meet all that criteria right. to be so, considered so, as so per federal rules or regulation or whatever we say. Do you want to say like legal dependence or because, it, you know, you just argue that anybody is a dependent until they're 25 or 26. But, you know, are they are you still writing them off on your taxes? No, you're not counting them as a dependent on your taxes. Well, I would put legal uh, dependent. All right. I'm just trying to I'm trying to avoid problems for you guys down the road. Thank you. Oh. No. It's good. Is that straight gin, Steve? What was that? Is that straight gin? <laughs> no. <laughs> Otherwise I wouldn't be talking now. <laughs> <laughs> that was all I had, uh, Dorinda. Okay. Great. Thank you. Oh. Um could we move down to the next one, which is my favorite? Safety approved footwear. I don't think we need to change this part, but I think we need to read it and understand. 
understand what it is, and it does not include socks and other. That I mean, that is true. Purchase that is Peter. Get into the windshield. It's already <laughs> <laughs> Peter. You're you're all broken up, but that was already addressed in the updated version. It yeah. states boot only. Okay. Okay. Steve, okay. So I have a question on that that came up today. On that on that safety part. Okay. And that is uh you say boot sound only, but um well first of all, my question would be is when do they get the two hundred dollars? Well, it says in here that they're eligible as of their hire date, they get their first pair and annually thereafter based on their hire date. But I know certificates used to be handed out after July 1 and people were using them. But um, this is how the personnel policy reads, but there's been a couple of versions out there. So we've been letting a lot of things slide. No, I mean, I understand that there was a lot of like other stuff, like I don't know, socks, all kinds of stuff. But uh, the question today is, uh, it came up that uh, can they? Would you want them to stay within the two hundred dollars? But how about rubber boots? Because you know we're out there, uh, out there today. I was out there on Government Hill Road with Shane and. Uh, we were digging out the end of the culvert, and I happened to be the only one uh, with uh, knee-high rubber boots, and I didn't like that because I didn't like running a hand shovel. But, uh, <laughs> no, and he asked the question, and the question was that. Shane asked the question, and I said, I don't know. I'll ask. Uh, are they allowed to get rubber boots? Or are we going to give them rubber boots? I mean, they have to walk around in the mud and uh, when they're doing, the, you know, changing culverts and stuff. I, I don't know. How do you feel about it, Select Board? Hey, guys. This, this is Paul. Could I just chime in on that, Vic, for you? Sure. Go oh, ahead, Paul. The, the, the only reason that stipulation was in there, guys, is, is because um, uh, the insurance company requested that, that we put that in there based on the ANSI standard. But I do believe that those rubber boots, as long as they were steel toe, would still meet the required, uh, you know, minimums for that. You'd, you'd have to call the insurance to check that out. But that's the exact reason why that that particular, the way it's written, they, they asked us in particular to put that in there. So that, that just gives you some clarity as to why that's written like that. So... My question is, does that mean everybody's going to get a pair of rubber boots and everybody's going to get a pair of leather boots? That's my question. Well, you can't do it for 200 bucks a year, I can tell you that. I don't know. Well, do they make their choice of what one they need? They might not like, need you know, you know, it all depends on what they're doing. I wouldn't want to be driving a truck all day with rubber boots on. That sounds, in the summertime, that sounds god-awful. Oh, I think I think it was stated that they would get boots, and but they would stay at the town garage. They're not going to be, you know, it's not like their other boots. They're going to be wearing them home. It's they're going to be using. It's kind of like a pair of chaps. We buy them. They're going to use a chainsaw. Well, what are what are the what are the what are those rubber what are the rubber boots they're looking for cost? Do you have any idea, Vic? No, mine were twenty bucks at Lenny's, but I don't know if they have any left. And but they have. No, I, you know, I'm thinking, you know, I mean, I don't know. No, I don't know how much they're going to cost. Not with steel toe, probably. Right. <clears throat> I don't mind do, but. Yeah. Yours do when they were 20 bucks? Yeah, I had a special I run on them of a year or two ago at, uh, a year ago at, uh, wow. at Lenny's. Yeah. I also think if you're going to add something like that and they're going to be left at the garage, you might want to put that under the safety equipment um, yeah. category as opposed to under the footwear that we're paying yep. for. I was just going to say that, Dorinda. I think you're absolutely right. Right. That's And that's why I was asking for it, if it was going to be under that. 
isn't that rule, you know, you, you call it safety, but, and it says a ASTM, uh, but isn't that a BOSHA thing? I mean, you have to have a, you have to have a, uh, uh, you know, a crush proof toe on any boot that you wear around construction anyways. Yep. Uh, you know, I, I, yep. I was going to say steel toe, but I think they do let, uh, let the, uh, the, the hard plastic ones through now. Yeah, it's all based on just the, the crush standard, Vic. Uh, they call it safety toe now because a lot of them are composite and things like that. And yes, Paul. I guess, that's right. yeah. That's, that's yeah. what I was trying to think of the word composite. I didn't, yep. it didn't come to me. Yeah, yeah no, and, and again, I think uh, this is just my opinion because when we had written that, that was based on the insurance's request when we were going to do the boot stipend. So it might just be worth checking with them before – um, you know, just to make sure those boots are eligible, I, I, I would dare say they are because, you know, a lot of those boots are a lager style rubber boot that, that would meet a, a minimum crush standard. So just, just, I would, I would just call those guys up and ask them, but, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if they would pass. Now, did you ever have uh, boots? Did you have like hip boots or anything like that when you were, uh, uh, when you were there? No, no, I, you know, I would just wear my rubber hunting boots and they, and they were not, you know, steel toe or composite toe by any means. Um, but, but as you figured out today, and I had a set that I would leave right there. Um, I did have at one time, they, they were the, like a maroon colored boot with a yellow steel toe. It's a popular logging boot in Maine and, and those would pass. Um, they don't offer much ankle support, but they do have the toe, you know, the safety toe, um, so I, I would just have them for me because I, I, you know, half of my footwear is rubber boots. But like you said today, I mean, in in those guys' favor, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of instances where they could really use them. You know, whether or not we provide them, I'm going to leave that up to you guys. But yeah, here's, they could definitely here's use what them. I, here's what I would suggest, guys, just to move this along for tonight. I would say, I I would say we we add to this boot thing that um, whatever, the, whatever the right word is, appropriate rubber boots can be included in this. And then we probably have to adjust the amount of money. But I'm not ready tonight to know what the amount of money should be adjusted to. But I would think if you had a, if you had a pair of rubber boots that you didn't wear all that much, they would last a long time. So, you know, maybe we don't have to adjust it that much. Yeah. Peter, right? uh, all those boots, those lacrosse boots you're talking about with the steel toe, the lager boots. I think, I correct me, but I think, I think those are like 190 bucks. Yeah, they're they are not cheap. I mean, you probably got a deal on them, Vic, and, and there are deals out there. But they, I, I know, and I, when I've bought them in the past, they're not cheap. So maybe if you did it on a on a biannual or something like that, like Peter said, they will last a long time if you're only using them when you need them, type of deal. <laughs> I would, I would suggest that we don't put that in the boot section, and and let let the uh, road people come to the select board a, with the with something, you know, it, it it does fall under safety equipment, and let let uh, Victor come to the select board and say, you know, I mean, we don't, he doesn't come to us actually, he doesn't come to us when they have to buy vest and and different items for safety equipment right <clears throat> i mean i think we're trying to nickel dime this thing i mean yeah so what you're saying it's probably better to get for the ask for forgiveness than it is permission i'm looking down i'm looking down at the at the safety equipment section yeah. and it says safety approved footwear footwear see section 20 so it bounces right back to uh yeah except now it's 17. right so can someone give me some guide, guidance about how you want me to put this into the do you want me to mention the rubber boots in the new paste in this in the in the in the, in the policy or not i would not i would not amend the policy at this point in time. We need to have them come to us with a recommendation of what they think they need. And and some price information because 
you know, I don't think I don't think we need to double the double a boot allowance so they get two pairs of boots every year. That feels like a lot to me. Yeah. But, it is. but um, I agree. There's certainly some conditions where the leather boots aren't going to cut it. So, can we can we table the rubber boot discussion for tonight and move on? Yeah. 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 What's next? Next one is under how vacation and sick time on um, the limits on it. Um, we have we need to define how we're going to get um let's see i there's we need to define how we can handle the limits we put in the policy here that we they can accrue up to so many hours a year and carry forward so many hours over the last couple of years we've let that slide um for several different reasons and i just don't know where it's becoming a liability on the books what um, is that? To have to carry over 200, 300 hours of vacation time. Gotcha. Um, when we say we can only carry over 120 or something like that. Um, so I think you need to decide how you want to handle this time. I mean, we don't want to cut the employee off, we want them to use their time, but if they don't have the ability to use their time, how do we handle this? Okay, the other way, just, just speaking from my experience to deal with this, and I don't really recommend it, but it does sort of work, is to say time in excess of that um, may be taken as extra compensation, extra pay, so they well, can that, use it up. They say truly they can't, they can't, for some reason, they can't take the time off, which to me seems crazy. Um, say, we'll, we'll pay you for up to so many days a year in addition to the hundred, the, whatever it is, 10 to 15 unused days that you're allowed to carry over. Well, again, it's an unbudgeted item. So right. if, if you're starting to pay this out, you're affecting your budget. Yep. Well, and also, uh, and also, while we're on this, we need to determine. We, we can say make, they can we can make it effective. We can make it effective. You there, Dorinda? You're gone. We can't hear you. Yeah. Okay, I can hear you. I, you know, this this is a real snake pit. I can tell you, and. The bottom line is, I think the first step is to enforce our existing personnel policy. And, you know, we can always, at the discretion of the select board, make the decision to violate our personnel policy for special circumstances. And that's, you know, what, I, we've been, that's what we've been doing, basically. I know, but we haven't, but, but I'm not aware, I'm not aware that the select board has been involved in that process, either the treasurer or the bookkeeper or somebody's been making that decision i don't remember that we've ever discussed that for particular well i i believe you guys are well aware that some people are unable to take their vacation and time well, are we talking about our town clerk yes. well, right here <laughs> <laughs> how did i know that well, well, I, I just—I think I you think know. I give our, like I think we give our beloved town clerk a year to use up for vacation. Or I don't know. But is that fair? I mean, and that's why I think this needs to be addressed. How we handle this, um, and I also think we need to clarify: Do we use a physical year or a calendar year, or how do we? Because. It just says they can carry forward, but carry forward from where this time? Because we've had the problem in the past, like even with the highway yeah. crew, I think two years ago, uh, or when COVID first started, the guys were concerned that they couldn't use this up or there was it's something to do with it. Our budget. 
Hmm? It should be in our budget cycle year. The carryover. Okay. Well, that answers the first half. Now you got the bigger half. Well, <laughs> you, by budget cycle, you mean fiscal year, correct? Yeah, yeah. fiscal well, year. I'm, I'm I'm very here. carefully, and I know this. Can you hear me now, as they say? No? Not really. You're in and out. Better than okay. it was. Um. Well, guys, if, if you can't hear me, and we're we're getting up, uh, we're getting up close to the Vermont border on 91, so the cell service is going to get sketchy. Yeah. I would, I'll, I'll go along with whatever you guys come up with, but I think basically what we have to do is say, okay, by by some date certain in the future, a year a year from this July 1st or something, uh, we're going to revert to our personnel policy guidelines except for special circumstances to be considered by the select board or something like that. I mean, I don't know how else to handle it. We, 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 we need to have a process for violating our procedure. We just shouldn't be just, you know, saying, oh, it's okay for Sarah to do it, but it's not okay for the road crew to do it or, or, or who knows what. Well, we haven't been, I mean, we've let the road crew carry over beyond what it was as well, you know, in certain situations, so. But, but no, 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 and, and we'll probably do that in the future. But I, but I think what we have to say, we have to, we have to somehow draw a line in the sand for a date when we're going to start enforcing this and make it a more formal process if somebody needs to request to carry over additional time. That's all I'm saying. How many days are we talking about total? It can't be that many between, the, we only have like five full-time employees, right? Maybe six. Five full-time. So how many days are we talking about? 20, 30? You mean as to the carryover hours? Yeah. I don't have that information in front of me, but I do know that Sarah's in particular is she hasn't taken a day off in two years. That's not true. I took well. I took Thursday, I took, you took Thursday off to get your COVID shot. <laughs> to recover from my COVID shot. <laughs> okay, so I I stand corrected. I mean, it just is. You know, it's. I think it's an issue, um, and not that she's. I think she's deserving of the time off and. Um, but if she can't take it, how are we handling this? But is she not taking it because she thinks she can't take it? And I mean, the, the reality is that, you know, if we had to close the town offices for a week, it's not the end of the world. Or if Dave did part time hours or whatever, right. I think that that Sarah needs to to find the time. It's not like it's 24 seven busy. 365 days a year in the town. And so she has to just set that time aside and people can wait. Right. Or Dave can go in or, right. you That's know, why we have an else. assistant. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's not a crime if we close it. It's just that, you know, it's the type of job where you're just constantly, people are just constantly kind of need you. They need you for taxes. They need you for life. Yeah. But they can wait. Yeah. I mean, I, I, know. I hear you. You're right. I will. I will go away when you know when when COVID lifts. I will go away. It's it's just it's just very difficult. We've had two years of back to back crazy election years where That's both it, you know, 2019 and 20 were both crazy. Mm -hmm. So the things are kind of calming down a bit. But I think we're going to have a pretty hot summer. I think that the, we're probably going to have a lot of board of civil authority meetings this summer. I expect, and I have the feeling that you know there goes summer vacations. But Sarah, maybe well, we can think about like you having summer hours at the town clerks, like close on Mondays and Fridays and people do their business Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday so that you can have at least take some time off because your sanity matters. Yeah, and, I agree. And thank you, Liz. That's a good that's a that good off. idea. And yeah. I am. I'm getting tired. So, yeah, thank you very much. That's a great idea. Summer hours, summer hours for the town clerk. Yeah, yeah I agree. Getting, Starting in May, starting after Memorial Day, have June, July, and August, all summer hours. I like it. Wow, yeah. I, I love it. 
That'll take yeah, care of some time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the yeah. complaints will roll in, especially on Mondays. That's fine. We'll, we'll deal with them. Tell them to, tell them to call me. Yeah. No, 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 no. Maybe we'll just do Thursdays. We'll close on. But with, people need they need to contact you on one, on Mondays. So we'll, so we'll Thursdays try to work and out. Fridays or something. Thursdays and Fridays. Get a long weekend. You need a long weekend, not a broken up Wednesday off. Not that. Right. Thank you. Okay. Good. Liz so is now my new that. hero. Are you going to take select board okay, so let's, off? Let's make our goal to get people in compliance over the next 12 months. How about that? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Should we, uh, Dorinda, start budgeting this as an uh, accrued liability? Well, yes, we I, have to. I, I do think it does get accrued in our financial reports, our audit reports from the bookkeeper. But the problem is, is we don't kind of, you know, how our money works. It's all sits in a pot. So it's not like, yeah, right. It all comes out of the fund balance. So right. we can accrue it on paper, but that's really not how it comes out. Yeah, true. Okay. My thing about vacation is, and I mean this in the most sincere way, it's important for everybody to take vacation. And I I think this I think this solution for Sarah, if it can work for her, is great. But I hope you'll take some time when you really go away for a week too. So when I go to Poland. When I go to Poland. Is it you go to Poland? Oh. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> when are you doing hey, that? Let's keep, let's keep moving. Okay. Uh, what else, Dorinda? Um, let's see. I think uh I think that answers the rest of them because we will um, we'll update these other sections to say that we can carry over certain things, the, the sick hours and all of that based on uh, the, count, the budget year, the physical year. So I think we're okay. I think we got through it. I've got one okay, last so question. What we, what we need to do now is get this get this document created and make sure we share it with everybody. So. Yeah. Well, we ought to read it too and make sure it says what we think it says. Yeah, that, yeah that's what I was thinking that maybe we just need to get a clean copy, circulate it once again, and then should we actually put it on the agenda uh, and vote on it as an update to the policy? Because there are some changes yep. there. Yeah. Yep. So can I-, I think the that, other thing that would be Really helpful, Sarah. When you when you update this, is if you can make it. And I don't know what the what the right terminology is, but make it so the changes are highlighted. Yep. So when we share it with the road crew, we can say, you know, the changes are all in parentheses, or the changes are all blue or red or whatever, because they get bogged down trying to go through the whole thing, and it isn't really fruitful. Well, they're not the only one. Can I just uh, can I just ask? Do you what about getting the road this road crew? I hate to go back to the rubber boots, but do we give them this draft without the rubber boots, or do we uh, want them to chime in before we do a draft? How do you how do you want to deal with that? No, I say we go ahead and we'll we'll do a separate thing on the rubber boots. Okay. I don't want the, I don't want the rubber boots to hold us up. All right, thank you. I've got one more thing which kind of relates but i don't think it should be in the personnel policy is um but i think it should be a policy of some sort as to uh, a purchasing limit that um people can spend on something without approval um it, that, should not, that should not be in the personnel policy but we should have right. a policy. that's why i'm saying it should be a purchasing policy but I think it's something you should consider as to who has, you know, who can spend up to how much on whatever it is they're purchasing. Um, you know, I, I like, for instance, and it always sounds like I'm throwing the highway department under the bus, but I'm not here. It's they're buying a plow. Um, I had to write a letter saying it was okay that, you know, to the company saying yes, we authorize the plow, you know, um, can and we guarantee payment. But who authorized 
the purchase of the plow. So that's not really in my authority to spend five, six, whatever thousand dollars is that whose authority should this fall under? So I think there should be some guidelines so I know how to handle it and or the accounting department knows how to handle it. Was it a budgeted item? No, it's not a budgeted item. Ah, okay. This is the plow for the- uh, For the new well, pickup truck. Yes. For the new truck, yes. But I just think other things, you know, like guardrails, I don't believe guardrails were a budgeted item. Um, but yet we have an invoice in the payables for guardrails. And I don't think that was in the budget that I'm aware of. Um, so I'm just, I just don't know how to handle things like this and who should be signing off on those amounts because they're significant. Yeah. Good question. Well, is, is Paul still on? So to uh, answer that question, when it, like, the way the way we have done it in the past, we have purchased trucks. Is the select board have, have you know made the decision and agreed? And uh, I'll be honest, I don't know why we didn't do this for the pickup truck. But like when we purchase big trucks, when we purchase graders or whatever, it's always a recommendation that comes to the select board, and then the select board approves it. I guess what made the what made the pickup truck a special thing was that our old pickup truck died. So we we were in a tight. Uh, in a tight spot to get it done. And of course we had planned, we had planned to uh, purchase that truck this spring, but we never actually had a proposal come to the select board to do it. We just did it. And that was probably a mistake in hindsight. So, you know, and I would say when we were discussing the truck, the, the amount for the plow should have been, should have been included in that. And then you, you'd know what to do during it, right? Right, or, and, you know, oh, my you question know, also, you know, whatever, whatever it takes, you know, lights, radios, you know, all this, all the stuff that we have to go through when we get in a truck. Right. And it's also in the case of, say, the plow, um, do, would we be beneficial to hold off waiting to spend that money in July after we start the new budget year? Or do you want it in this budget year? And so I would there's, have, I would there's have, some I would guidance. Have asked them, I mean, are, are they actually trying to buy the plow right now? Oh, Peter. yeah. Yeah. Peter. Yeah. Peter. Why? The plow, the, plow, um, the plow can be either way you would like it. Dean uh, has a plow down there. He doesn't have an issue with, uh, we talked to him today. He doesn't have an issue to waiting till after the 1st of July. You tell him whatever day you want, uh, August, July, or June, he will do it for you. But I mean, uh, the, the point I'm making is, you know, we don't want to be putting the plow on in October, November. I understand we, that. That's I, exactly what you told me when we bought the truck. Right. And that's why we went through, uh, that's why we went ahead and checked on the plow because uh, uh Shane wasn't sure that there might be a shortage. I think that was a valid point, but we did talk. No, it's another, we, it's we did talk to no, all, all I'm trying to say, I'm not, I'm not upset about any of this, but just, just as a, as, a, as a, as a procedure, you know, come back to the select board and say, you know, they have plows available. Right now, we don't know. There may be a supply problem later. I'm concerned. We should probably buy the plow now, and then we, we'll make the decision. But it, a, a purchase, a purchase of that level, and the question is, what's the right level? I don't know. But I would certainly say, for a six or seven thousand dollar plow, that's something should that should be uh, that should be approved. Peter. Yes. <clears throat> um. When it comes to the uh, uh, highway department, we budget for uh, uh, many different things. And if you want to set an amount on here, I don't know what you'd set for an amount, but like they have to buy culverts, that's many thousands of dollars. We buy gravel. We have somebody come in and do our screening for the stuff. I mean, uh, Vic is gonna be coming yeah, to us every that, week. We put those items in the budget though, Steve. 
Yes. Right. So you're talking about just unbudgeted items. Yes. Okay. Yeah. If it's if it's in the budget, it's approved. Yes. Yep. Would be my answer. Unless they're in a disagree. Do we want to think about it as actually like unbudgeted items that are capital items, like a plow, whereas like a culvert's you know, I'm not sure that we should have to approve, wait two weeks for a select board meeting to approve a culvert because of some. Oh, they're in the budget know. list. They're in the No, but I meant for an budget. emergency. I budget. meant for some emergency thing that is well, like a repair or something that wasn't budgeted. Because I'm, I'm just envisioning them going, oh, this is over five thousand dollars, and now I've got to wait for the select board to approve it when it's something we would approve, but it was not in the budget. I don't know. Well, here's so you know we have we have a budget every year for maintenance of our vehicles, right? And um, sometimes if an engine blows up or there's some catastrophic failure, we overspend our budget. But we don't we don't typically the select board typically does not vote on all those items, even if it's a thirty thousand dollar engine. I mean right. we have a we have right. a we have a budget and, and we maintain our vehicles and we hope it's within the budget. And most of the time it is, but sometimes it isn't. Um, and you know, we're aware of it, we know it, but we gotta get the truck fixed, you know? So I'm just saying I'm just saying when it's an unbudgeted item and you know, if we had an item in the budget for a new pickup truck and a plow, which probably maybe we should have, I don't know. Um, it was certainly in the capital plan, but it was not in the budget. But I don't think any of this should be, I mean, we're, we're branching off the personnel policy and getting into a purchasing policy. And I think we need to table that for tonight for a discussion on another, uh, on another night. I don't think we are in that bad a shape, but I, what happens and, and this used to happen to me at work all the time is, is, you know, I would, I would tell somebody to go out and buy something. And the next thing, you know, I'd have the, have the accounting department sending me nasty grams saying, where, 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 where is this in the budget? Where do I get this money from? You know, I mean, yeah. and if we say, at the at the then it's let's let's table this for further discussion another time how about that and i think sarah then, had so, one more question does that work for everybody no. right and i did say that this should be a um a purchasing policy or something for you know not part of the personnel but i do need to know or the highway should know whether or not how to move forward with that plow because again, the question becomes, what budget year do you guys want this to fall into? Well, I would, I would say just to deal with a particular plow, if there's not anticipated to be a shortage or a delivery problem, I would like to purchase the plow after July 1st. Mm -hmm. I that agree. That just makes sense to me. And probably, and probably ideal, when do, our, when do our taxes start coming in, Dorinda? We've got another payment due May 20th. Yeah, but, but I, I'm talking about, oh, well, probably the first one will probably be in August. So I would say, oh, I don't know, $7,000 really doesn't make any difference, does it? No. I mean, if, no. the year Peter, it then makes it, but Peter, I mean, we'll have, we'll have to pay it, right? Peter. Yes. Fifty-five hundred dollars. Okay, thank you. Peanuts. It is peanuts. Yep. I agree. Thank you. Okay. I think Sarah had one more item for the personnel policy. I, I don't, but I do want to ask: What do we do with about this plow? Do you say they can purchase it before July first, or do they purchase it after July first? My after. preference would be, and I, you know, whatever. But my preference would be. Do it after July 1st. Do it next year. Okay. We bought the truck this year. Let's buy the plow next year. If, if everybody agrees with that. If they don't, and if all of a sudden, if all of a sudden the, the people selling the plows say, well, we're worried we might not have a plow for you, then come back to us and we'll probably say, go ahead and buy the damn thing now then. But all things being equal, I think there are going to be plows available. But I don't know that.
Hell, I'll put my plow on. I'll plow the town, uh, Paul. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So are we good on that for tonight? Yeah. I really am. I really am going to be going into a black hole here in a little while. So, uh, treasurer's report, Dorinda? Uh, nothing of great importance. Um, we got the, uh, just late this afternoon, we got the uh, last bill for the school payment, which is going to be uh, 200 and. 80 some thousand dollars so yep. that, that's going to be our biggie coming up and when is that due uh we have uh 30 days after our last tax payment so we june 20th we got to pay it by yep yep no choice on that one no nope. no nope, but then then that's it. So then we'll know uh, where we stand. Okay. But you're not you're not projecting any cash flow problems for the year end. No. Okay. Thank you. Road commissioner's report, Victor. Uh oh. Victor got the mic off. You're muted. How's that? Is that better? That's better. A lot better. I, uh, I have to apologize to you, Peter, that uh, Freightliner had to go back to uh, Charla Boys, much to our chagrin, because uh, nobody would weld it. <coughs> and uh, <laughs> no, no, nobody's, it's an aluminum tank, and uh, most of the guys around here won't touch it. We just well, can't win back. for losing, can we? What's that? We just can't win for losing, but we got to get the damn thing fixed. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Much to our chagrin. But uh, with that said, I think, uh, I think, you know, I mean, I thought we were had to buy a pickup, but I, I think also, don't we have to buy an, uh, a new truck next year and trade that truck in? Maybe. I believe next year, yes. Well, okay. Well, make sure we get it in the budget. Um, <laughs> we should. Uh, we should look into real seriously getting an extended warranty on them, I believe. No, Steve and I, Steve and I have talked about that in the past. Absolutely, okay. I agree. Yep. Um, you've answered the question about the plow. You're going to put it off until after July, maybe August. Um, I had a question kind of for Steve, and uh, we, uh, we were wondering um, that um, – you had that forty thousand dollars that was on uh, for well services. Yep, specialized services. Yep. Yeah, and then Shane would like to buy gravel, and that's not really what it was budgeted for, or was it? Uh, well, <clears throat> no, it wasn't budgeted uh, for I mean, buying gravel. Can we gravel. do that? Can we do well, that? I I think we can, but I I think that we should be doing some uh, ditching. Uh, which is what part of that was for or what that was for. Uh, we're we're going to be limited on able to spend that money. First of all, there's a lot of ditches that we need to do that just can't be done right now because it's just so wet. So right. it leaves a limited amount of time to do that. And I think we discussed this in a couple of select board meetings already that if the rest of that money wasn't spent, that we'd try to buy as much gravel as we could. Could we like buy half of it select board, you know, take half of that amount and then put the other half? I mean, are you saying to hire somebody to, Shane is saying he thinks he can do the ditching, but are, well, do you I, hire somebody to come in? I, I, I question whether that, that our crew can do all of the ditching. I think we've got enough ditching to do that we could hire some of that done. And that's what that's what that money was in there for. Okay. I, I would say, rather than saying half of it, I think we can buy some gravel with some of that money. But before that happens, I think we ought to see if we can't lock in a contractor to do some ditching and then we'll know what our costs are. Okay. And uh, yeah, I have no problem with that. It was just, 
he was asking for direction and uh, that's what we want to, we want to do uh, the correct thing. Uh, wasn't that a special appropriation? The 40,000? It wasn't, Dorinda, no? No. The intent, the, the intent was to hire an outside contractor to do extra work, which the road crew couldn't get to. Right. right. Okay. So that's why, that, you know, whether that was, I'm not sure whether, I can't remember whether it was just ditching or whether it was some of the mud season stuff or whatever it was, but to, uh, you know, have a chunk of money to hire a subcontractor to come in and do some of that work. But whether it's a line item in the budget. Line item. Right. Okay. Fine. Yeah. But yep. can I just clarify, was that two years in a row where we didn't use it the first year and we carried it over somehow to the next year? Oh, no. no. This is the first year. That's the first year. <laughs> and no, no, what Steve was, what we're, what we're Steve worried was about right when he was talking about buying the ground. by July 1st. Remember when we had that, maybe I'm confused. Remember when we had the town meeting and the people got up and they complained about spending 40,000 was that the year before last no but that was, that was for this that was for this, this funding year. cycle right. okay all right can i say yeah. something though so the money doesn't even if we don't spend it it's not like it goes back into the budget it just goes into the bottom line of the fund balance right and right just to make you aware right now i think the highway department is at 82 percent of their budget so you need to look at um you know so they've got two months worth of expenses to carry through for the next you know so do if you're going to spend that forty thousand dollars really hasn't been touched but if your expenses continue to grow your unbudgeted expenses, let me word it that way. Yeah. And um, then that's going to be using part of that money, technically, unless you want to come in over budget. So no, we don't want to come in over budget, but we're at 78%. You no, know, that, that report I said when I sent it out did not include the $22,000 that is in the pay the things that you're selling today. So you're okay, uh, selling that was today. What, that, that was my next question. Okay. So that yeah. answers that. That's fine. Yeah. So that's there's twenty two thousand dollars worth of highway expenses in tonight's orders. So, so that's an eighty what? Eighty two percent. Eighty two. Okay, so it's gonna be close. Well, they. Uh, Dorinda's been helping me, uh, and we're trying to figure that out. I mean, I figure that we have that forty. Even though we spent thirty thousand for the truck, I think we still and there's a couple other line items that are over. But we'll yeah. I'll check into it. But I I was figuring that we would have that that we haven't spent any money on culverts and that was fifteen and right. Uh, so we have that forty and we have that fifteen and I think we have a little bit more, but I wouldn't want to spend over the fifty five. Right, I think you. I think you're going to be in good enough shape so that you can come in uh, at the budget or under a little bit, but without going over. Right. Well, yeah. that's what we've been trying to figure out today. But I'm not the master of a budget, and uh, and Dorinda's going to. Uh, we're going to. I'm going to talk to Dorinda tomorrow. Yeah. Hope is to be just to be, you know, for for at least the next month or so to be under budget. Uh, projected. Yeah, you're going to have roughly one hundred and twelve thousand dollars left starting today. Well, I figured a hundred, so we're very close. Yep. So have we lost Peter? Oh, I'm here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm but here, but I don't know I'm going to be here. I'm not. I'm now in. <laughs> yeah. I think he's gone. Peter oh, sounds, Peter sounds I, like he's in outer I'm state. Bro, I'm getting further away. But okay. we're also, so I, I would like to, hey guys, I just, just because I'm afraid I'm going to lose you, I would I would like to move ahead and just quickly talk about our, our special meeting next week with the, with the fire department situation. I had a, uh, a good, uh, long 
one meeting with uh, the water bear uh, town manager, Bill Sheplock, and their chief. And uh, I also. Fairly long Zoom meeting with with Bill Fraser, or with the with the Worcester. Ch hoping is that we can figure out some kind of plan of next steps. You're hard to understand, Peter. I know. I know. There you go. Peter, we can't hear you. Mm -mm. The fire department. I will reach out before. But I'm looking to really try and make a plan for. Okay. Well, I'll say it and then I'll sign off. Who's How are we doing? It? We can hear you now. Okay. All I'm saying is, my goal for this meeting next week is to have a real plan of how we're going to move forward. Okay. So, um. We're going to hear from these people. They're going to tell us. I have provisional, provisional cost numbers from uh, from Fraser for them to do the whole thing, which is a pretty good, pretty good guideline or starting point. Um, I'm I'm trying to get as much information as I can, and I'll try and get it to you all uh, before the meeting, as much as I can. Great. Great. Okay. So so with that, uh, I'm going to sign off and let let Mary. Uh, Take care of the rest of the meeting unless there's anything urgent under correspondence. Nothing. Okay. Okay. Well, so no thank you all. I, I apologize for this. Uh, it was either not go to the meeting or do this. I could not go to the track. John wouldn't allow it. <laughs> he said it was important for my mental health. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, Phil, just just quickly, any any update on the uh, on the uh, Broadband situation. I'm going to ask. I'm going to um, ask Sarah to put an item on the uh, on the agenda next week. Okay. 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 Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. Good night. See you, Peter. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. you. There's only one other item, which is to move approval of the minutes as amended um, from uh, the April 20th meeting. Does someone want to make that motion? So moved. Okay. Uh who moved? He <laughs> moved, I seconded. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The ayes have it. And is there any other business to come before the select board? I only have two people who have authorized the warrant so far. You've got mine, correct? Yes, I got you yours got and I have Phil's. Okay. I hadn't gotten yours, Mary, unless you sent it since we came on. No, I sent mine uh, around four. I don't know why it didn't come in, Dorinda. I'll send it again. I have not okay. sent mine, Liz. I haven't looked at them. Okay. All right. No problem. As long as somebody sends me one. I only need three. I just want to clarify, you guys, that was a, a double thing. The April 13th and April 20th select uh April 13th special meeting and the April 20th regular meeting minutes. Did you guys right. see who Phil seconded? That's for both? Okay, good. Yes. So uh, any other business come before the board? Hold on. I, was Phil at one of those meetings? I think he missed one, didn't he? Oh, wait. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I think you did, Phil. You missed. Uh, oh, God, let me just go. The me. last. Hey, I was sick for one of those. I think you missed the last one, Phil. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll retract my second. Somebody so else. I'll I'll move it for both of them, and then we have enough to vote, don't we? Because if Mary votes, we have enough to pass it. Yeah, yeah you do. So Liz moves. Okay, okay, so the new motion is still for both the thirteenth and the twentieth um, minutes. Uh, why don't we separate them? Because then Phil can vote on the on the which one did you miss, Phil? The last one. The last one, I think. Yeah. So what if we vote them separately? Is that okay with those making them? Yeah, I don't care. All those in favor of approving the April 13th, 2021 minutes indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed saying no. The ayes have it. And Phil abstained from the second. 
one of the minutes, approval of the minutes on uh, April 20th. Aye. Oh, I move it. Okay, Liz, and any, or is there a second? I'll second. Okay, so you've heard the motion. Um, all those in favor of approving the April 20th, 2021 minutes indicate by saying aye. 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 And those opposed? Any abstentions? I abstain. Okay, the ayes have it with one abstention. Any other business to come before the board? I, I just want to ask Liz, can you um, can you come down at some point and sign the local emergency operation plan? Or I need any uh, other select board member because it's going to have to be Peter. And since he's the also the the train, the guy with the certification, I need one more select board member. So anybody feels like coming down to the office to sign this? I'm I'm going to be down there meeting Dorinda okay. tomorrow morning at night at eight thirty. Anyway. Okay, I'll leave it right on the counter for Perfect. you. Thank you very much. Anything else? Nay. If not, I'll uh, adjourn the meeting. And what does your clock say? Mine says six twenty three. Yep, I agree. Great. Yay. 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 Thank you. Yay. See you all next week in the unending weekly meeting of the middle Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank Sarah, you. for next, next week when we have the special meeting, yeah. um, can you put an executive session on yep. same citation as last time, whatever yep. we Okay. Gotcha. Say no more. Say no more. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All Thanks, right. everyone. Good to see you. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.